Welcome back to the second Dynon deep dive on P2 Arrow. I want to start by correcting a few errors that I made in the last video as to not steer anyone astray. First off, I stated that the second A in Adhars was the word AND. However, that's a bit of a slang interpretation and really it stands for attitude. Secondly, while describing the network hub, I stated that the ADSB receiver would plug in there. That's also false, as the ADSB utilizes a direct serial connection to the screen, thanks to those keen ears out there that caught those errors. Keep in mind, I'm just an average guy, just like all you guys out there. I don't consider myself an expert. I just enjoy the process of sharing my experience as I navigate building this aircraft. Now on to today's topic. I wanted to look at the comm radio system offered by Dynon. Dynon's radio integrates deeply with your Skyview system. They offer both the 25 and 8.33 kHz channel spacing for worldwide applicability. Let's take a look at the feature list. You can tune frequencies by airport and station type at the touch of a button. You can send frequencies directly from the Skyview. It's got GPS based reverse lookup of airport and station type for manually entered frequencies. Both vertical and horizontal versions are available. You can monitor your standby frequency with dual watch. It's fully backlit and has auto dimming control. It's got one touch flip flop with remote trigger options. It's got a transmit indicator and a receive indicator with active and standby differentiation. It also has a stuck mic indicator with transmit timeout to help prevent you from being that guy. A quick look at the power requirements in the install manual shows that none of these use much power at all, but the 5 amp circuit being more than sufficient to cover its needs. The wiring diagram shows both the control head and the remote comm unit sharing a single power source, and I would assume that the intercom box, which we'll talk about here in a minute, could also join those two on that circuit. So if anyone knows the answer to that out there, let me know in the comments below. The connections between these units couldn't be simpler, with your typical data in and out as well as power and features like flip-flop and push-to-talk mixed in there. Remember to use shielded wire anytime it's carrying an audio signal to prevent noise in your headset. Dynon does a great job at suggesting grounding layouts to prevent the dreaded ground looping issues as well. Detailed pin information is clearly laid out for every plug as well. This makes things very clear and easy to figure out while planning things out. Let's take a look at the intercom now. I do plan to use this, but I have yet to purchase mine, so I don't have anything to show you in person. Looking at the specs, this is a two-place stereo intercom with connectivity for extra things like EFIS audio alerts and music. You normally don't find features like this unless you go with an expensive audio panel. One cool thing is it doesn't have to be with a Skyview system. You can use this intercom in any experimental out there, even LightSport. It has high fidelity audio circuitry, so no more scratchy or garbled voices. Just stereo music that sounds fantastic. Dual radio support. Built-in failsafe between the pilot headset and the primary radio allows communication even if the intercom loses power. This also has horizontal and vertical versions of the faceplate, so panel integration is easy. It has a selectable auto mute so it turns down the music when the radio or other non-muting inputs like EFIS alerts receives audio. A single knob press toggles whether or not the intercom speech also mutes music. Independent intercom voice activation. This reduces the background noise. Talking in one headset won't open up the squelch on the other. Radio broadcasts are also isolated so that only the person pressing the press to talk is heard over the air. And as for installing these parts in the aircraft, I've chosen to locate the remote radio back under my baggage floor next to the transponder. They look a lot alike, but the radio is the more golden color one. I'll take off the transponder just to show you how easy it is since the radio works the exact same way. I secured this mount to the tubes using cushion P-clamps and it worked out very clean in my opinion. Not all the wires are in place here, but you kind of get the idea of how things would lay out. And as for the control head, apart from being a bit of an odd shape to cut out, it's really not a difficult task at all. Dynon has a very good video detailing the functions and the use of this radio, so I'll link that in the description and I encourage you to go take a look at it. I think you'll find an unmatched user interface with a very usable set of features for the everyday pilot. Hopefully, I didn't put my foot in my mouth during this one, but if I did, make sure to roast me in the comments and set us all straight. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.